Hello everyone, a big welcome back to my channel. Take a look at my new freaking jacket. It is the best thing right now. Although my dad cranks up the heating at home, so I'm really, really hot, but this will be perfect at Adam's house because heating's expensive and sometimes he doesn't always have it on, but I'm so obsessed. It actually came in the wrong color. I was supposed to get this in bright pink, but now I'm so glad I got it in gray because I just, this is such a nice color. Anyway, hi. <laughs> This video is going to be split up into two parts because you guys asked the best questions. I decided to do a Q&A because I haven't done one for months and months and months and months and I've never been asked such a good amount of questions. And I was like, oh, I want to answer this one, but I want to answer this one and this one. And I'm like, well, this needs to be a two-parter. Uh, thank you for asking all those wicked questions. Um, and I'm going to get straight into it because I don't want this to go on for too long. Side note, I asked you guys to ask questions on my Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So if you're not part of any of those, then please make sure you are because then you can be in future videos. First question says, hey, I noticed you recently stopped ending your videos with choose happiness and happiness will choose you. Is it because your meaning of happiness has changed or because you just don't think that's how happiness is achieved good question very good question for those of you who didn't used to watch me back then I used to finish my videos with choose happiness and happiness will choose you it was just something I always said it was something I always believed in but throughout the time of me saying it I did upset a few people and I think some people cringed when hearing that or some people didn't like it and it made them feel uncomfortable and I understand that like I get that um, I know and I'm aware that that isn't always the case and kind of preaching happiness in that way is good and all until, you know, people are faced with like mental health issues or they are in a circumstance where happiness at that point in time is literally extremely hard to find, let alone choose. I just felt a bit funny saying it as time went on. The internet is a very sensitive place in general and I would hate for you guys to kind of not like something that I say anyway, let alone saying that every single video is a little bit too much for me. Like I can get away with kind of saying things one time that upset a lot of you, but then not saying it again. But something like that, I was like, oh, I don't know. It, it sounds like I'm being very too careful but I know that a lot of you guys suffer with like your own issues and you've got problems going on and me sitting here and saying make sure you're choosing happiness and it will choose you is kind of like a bit cheesy and corny even though I personally still believe that you can get out of bed you can choose to be pissed off at what happened the day before or upset about what's going on at the moment which are things you cannot physically change or you can just notice they are there but choose to go about your day a bit more positively so yes i still believe in that uh just decided not to preach it anymore <laughs> amber oakley oh my gosh a tree just fell down in my garden <laughs> oh my god that scared the life out of me my next question was asked by amber oak lee and she says in the last few years how do you think you've changed as a person is there anything you are really proud of that you've done recently love you and your videos ellie i love you too amber wow the sun is really messing up this video look at that my family always used to mock me and tell me that i'm a very sensitive person and i take everything to heart which is still very partly true but i think over the years i have grown quite a thick skin i mean you kind of have to if you're on the internet a lot and you read comments, you accept the fact that strangers from all around the world are going to judge you for who you are. Uh, you have to grow a very thick skin. And it does make me a little bit worried sometimes when I see people comment things like that. And maybe I remember that family members might see people calling me horrible things or saying horrible things. But I've grown such a thick skin now that I don't see it as harmful as maybe a friend would or a family member would. Like someone would see that and say, Ellie, like someone called you this the other day. And I'm like, did they? I don't know. Like add that to the list. It's just one of those things you kind of, you don't look at with meaning anymore. As soon as like a troll comment is on my video, I read it, but I don't, it doesn't go in. I don't know if that makes any sense. You kind of teach yourself how to look at a comment and not just read a comment. Another thing is that I feel as though I've gotten a lot better with my anxiety. Uh, a big part of my anxiety was that I had this weird obsession and paranoia that everybody was out to get me. Like I felt as though stepping outside would involve everyone who 
is in that space to judge me and look at me and watch me and analyze me but I've gotten better at that when I've gone to like different events and I've met different people like I learned that either everyone's just so busy worrying about themselves or people respect you a lot more than you believe um, I used to go to different events and assume that I'm going to be ignored but it wasn't until I actually attended the events and realized that people just in your line of work they have respect for other fellow bloggers whatever you want to call them <laughs> there isn't beef and if there is, then fuck them. They don't deserve your time. I think I realise what I deserve a little bit more nowadays. Beforehand, I felt as if I should get less than what I deserve because that way I wouldn't be disappointed or let down or upset if it goes wrong. But I've learned to realise life is way too short to live like that. The good that you get from giving yourself the best you can get over tops like any sadness you may get from losing that i think the next question was asked by ellen grantham and she asks where do you think you would be today if youtube didn't exist I definitely would still be doing something within like the film or video industry possibly although YouTube was one of the main things that got me into learning about equipment and software and stuff but I, I think I would either be doing video production for brands and such like companies that want me to make videos for their website or whatever or if perhaps YouTube was the reason that I got into video I, I can't like specifically remember the first like time I realized I love video and film so if it was YouTube that brought me in that direction then I think I would probably be doing something along the lines of writing I don't know whether that means like as a journalist or writing books or blogs or I just I love writing I've always loved writing when I read Ellen's question I thought what was something that I was always doing as a child because that was probably going to be the route I was going to go down in and it was writing I was always writing I had books everywhere in my bedroom stuffed with poems stories all sorts. As a kid I was also obsessed with playing teachers. I really wanted to be a teacher at one point point. Um, but then as I grew up I realised that kids are brats and I would hate to stand in front of 30 of them. <laughs> My next question comes from Alice Gale and she asks do you think you and Adam will move in together? house tour question mark honestly if we're gonna be honest right now i would love to move in with adam um which is so bizarre because i've never said that about anybody i may have like danced around the idea or mentioned it a few times to friends or partners in the past or whatever but the whole part of me never felt like that was the right idea i just knew that i was kind of fantasizing about that but i feel like with adam he's just like this really calm cool got it together character that I would love to live with someone like that and as well as that he's lived in a flat on his own for like three four three three years so he kind of knows what he's doing obviously as well as that he's my partner like I love him and of course I would want to spend time in a flat or house with someone who is my best friend but with something like that I I feel as though I'm going to let him be the decision maker of that I'm kind of just gonna wait for him to make that move <laughs> he doesn't have a family around this area to fall back on with me if i wanted to move out with him and things didn't go the right kind of way that we felt they would or i don't know something meant that i had to move out again i've got a family to move back on whereas he doesn't so like i feel as though he might feel a little bit more pressure with me moving in i don't know if that makes any sense he's got more commitments than i do whether he wants to move out of his flat as well or would like me to move in i don't know i don't want to talk about this too much because like it's not my place to say my own sister felt it would be humorous to comment on the post and ask which is your favorite sister vicky or kate neither emma morgan asks a series of questions she said would you ever grow out your side fringe if you could okay let's let's just break down this comment yes i would at the moment i've really been digging hair this short and has no fringe i just love the look of pushing your fringe back the next question she asks is if you could only live with one hair color for the rest of your life what would you choose definitely red red's like my favorite staple color it's one of those colors that i put on my head look in the mirror and go ellie there you are <laughs> and her last question was if you could work with a makeup company to do a collaboration what would you choose without a doubt Too Faced simply for their packaging and just branding in general I mean the makeup's good but the <laughs> the branding is so beautiful I feel as though 
whatever I would do with them would just look really cool. The aestheticness would be on point. The next question comes from Tamara Jane Fox. She says, when you're feeling down, what helps you smile? Any advice for people in a hard slash dark place? Love you. I love you too. When I feel like I need a bit of boosting, I tend to force myself to recognize the progress that I've made recently. I find it very hard a lot of the time to notice whether I'm doing well. <laughs> Sometimes that does involve me having to ask people close to me, like to remind me of the, of the things I need to be reminded about because I'm feeling a little bit pants about myself. Cool things that I've done basically. And sometimes when I'm down it's usually because I feel like I'm sort of stuck in a rut. I've been feeling that a lot recently. I feel as though self-employment does that because you lose the balance between work and leisure. Half the time I just feel like I'm constantly working and I forget that I need to have a break sometimes. Like I'm becoming a little bit of a workaholic. I never thought I'd say that because people who used to do that pissed me off. I always used to tell myself as a little girl that I would never be a workaholic in someone who is obsessed with what they do for a living. But as I've gotten older, I tend to find any time that I'm not working as wasted time. And that's such a bad way to look at life because it's not like time you're having with your friends, time you're having with your family is not wasted time. But I think it's because with self-employment, you are constantly like chasing your tail and trying to make ends meet and you know how valuable time is because you haven't got a certain amount of hours that guarantee you a certain amount of money. So you're constantly thinking, oh, I could have done this or that, oh, I could have got this done, I need to get this done. You've got like to-do lists all the time and deadlines to meet and such. Or I might not be working a lot, but I'm banning myself from seeing people to give me more chances to find the motivation to work. So if someone's like, oh, can I see you on Tuesday? I'm always thinking, so if I'm seeing her on Tuesday, I need to work really hard on Monday. And then when I'm seeing her on Tuesday, I should probably ask her how long we're gonna hang out with because then I can get on with stuff afterwards. Or uh, maybe I could just say no to her because that way I can get more done. And it's ridiculous. And I just feel like sometimes I need telling no. I need to be shoved outside and kicked up the ass with a boot. Um, because I just need to do something that lets my hair down and just lets me remember that life is fun. You know, it's not all about what you're doing for a living. So that helps me get out of a downer. Um, just doing st fun stuff with friends and family and letting my hair down and remembering what it is I do as a hobby rather than for a job. Although I love what I do as a job, sometimes it's nice to just play some video games for uh, two hours or three or go out to a restaurant, go out for a nice meal, see a friend, chat with someone, have a coffee. It's just nice to do those things. Sometimes I forget and it makes me feel so much better when I've done them. That leads me to my last question and um, you're gonna have to wait for the second part of this Q&A, which will be uploaded on my channel soon. So be sure to subscribe. This question comes from Serena Lee, which is a very personal question. She asks, how old were you when you first got drunk slash had sex? Fair question, fair question. I've spoken about alcohol in an alcohol abuse video uh, where I talk in depth about my relationship with alcohol, so I don't want this number I'm about to say freak you out. If you would like to know more information on why the number is so low, please click on that video. Uh, there is a link somewhere that's just about to pop up. I got drunk at the age of 14, um, maybe even tried alcohol at 13, but drunk, drunk. 14 I want to say and had sex at 15 I was almost 16 years old I'd been in a relationship with someone for six months and we were together for like over a year so it wasn't me as a young person trying it because I was you know pressured to or all my friends were actually all my friends hadn't I was just really comfortable with this guy really happy I know that's a very young age I felt a lot older than I, I was, which I can now tell in hindsight, but I believed that we were both doing it because we were both comfortable, wanted to try it, we both loved each other. I know, you can be in love at 16, and yeah. I don't know why I'm trying to justify it, I just don't wanna be judged. Those are all my questions. Um, like I said, I've already got the questions for part two lined up, so don't feel like you need to ask any questions in the comment section. Though if you do have something really big, I can respond to you using my phalanges in the comment section below. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys on...
Sunday. Um, have a lovely, jubbly weekend. Uh, I love you so much. Thank you.